Good afternoon. Um, this afternoon, I want to talk with uh, my great friend, long-standing friend, Giles Cooper. Um, and I want to talk surveys. And I, I want to make this um, obviously an interesting and insightful session. Um, and Giles is the man for that. Um, we've worked together right from our Cheltenham and Gloucester days back in the uh, in the 90s. Um, and Giles knows an awful lot and is very a very, very good communicator. So I'm sure there's lots of questions my listeners have, you know, why this, why that? So let's um, let's first of all ask, oh, uh, let, yeah, let's ask Giles to uh, introduce himself. And um, Giles, who are you and what, what are you going to talk about? Hi, Mark. Nice afternoon. Welcome. 1993, God of the child. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, been in the area for many, many years now. I've been in, in Gloucestershire for over 30 years. Um, doing surveys, uh, initial evaluation work, a lot of evaluation work for CNG with you. And then more recently, um, working for um, a, a well-known local firm as surveyors. And then in the last uh, year or so, just working with a smaller business, but working out of Cheltenham, doing residential survey and valuation work for buyers, lenders, uh, solicitors, IFAs, these sort of people. So yeah, anything to do with the house, basically. Brilliant. We We all have go-to people in life and Giles is my go-to survey man because if I get completely stuck or confused or don't understand something I will ask Giles he will always put it in very simple plain English as to what is not happening or what is happening um, but at least it helps me so I can explain to a client uh, what is going on. Giles let's just start perhaps then with level of surveys and why is a survey different to evaluation do you want to talk about that? Yeah absolutely the, the, the general public out there have a perception that there are three levels of survey. Actually, there are only two. But if I got a pound for every time someone has said to me, well, it's all right, I'm having a mortgage survey done on my house. I'm all right. Thank you. Um, I'd be a very rich man. It's worth just sort of squashing that one at the very outside that a mortgage valuation is what it says. It's a valuation. It's not a survey. It's a 10, 15, 20, 25 minute look at a house. Uh, and it's really this there uh, simply to tell the mortgage lender what that house is worth. And I think that's really, really important. It is not a survey. What's also interesting about that is that actually a huge proportion of mortgage applications going through at the moment don't actually have a valuation at all. Um, they might have a desktop or a drive by assessment, but they don't actually have an internal inspection. So fundamentally, a significant proportion of people raising mortgages Nobody will look at that house on their behalf unless they have a survey. And then there are two types of survey. They go under the wonderful titles of level two and level three. For us old people, it's, we used to call them the home buyer survey and the building survey. Um, and they are the two fundamental types of private survey. And which one you have very much depends on what you buy. In a nutshell, if you buy something pre-Victorian, typically you go for a building survey. If you buy something post-Victorian, you go for a level two. So that's basically where we are with the two types of survey. So it's two surveys, one valuation. Brilliant, brilliant. And can we just pick up on the, the, the phrases that you use there, drive by and desktop? It's phrases that you I use every day and probably must stop doing so because clients don't understand that, nor should they. What is a drive by and what is a desktop? Uh, they are literally what they say. And, and the frightening thing about this is that it wasn't that long ago that every mortgage application had a valuation done on it. And people like me were employed by the banks and building societies to go in their cars out to these various houses, doing four or five or six a day, going to the house, climbing in the loft, looking out and producing a detailed report. Nowadays, I say a vast majority are done either from the desk or from the from the car, depending on the loan to value typically. So if the loan to value is typically low or they're an established client, then depending on what criteria they fit, the lender will either commission a desktop valuation, which is literally sitting at the desk with a computer saying the computer says the house is worth 50,000. Uh, or a drive by where you literally drive past the house from the outside and then say it's worth £60,000. So they are literally what they are. They are very simple uh, valuations based normally on online information. So right moves, statistics like that. Great. Thank you. And so level two and level three, just summarise the difference. 
Yeah, level two is a um, it's actually my preferred report. It's really for, uh, as they describe it, more modern types of houses. Actually, we talk Victorian onwards, uh, but it's houses which haven't been significantly altered. It's your average three bed semi, your average Victorian terraced house, um, that sort of property. It's a great report. It's uh, discussed by the RICS or described by the RICS as an economy survey, which I think is the worst description ever. Um, it is actually a, a significant defects report. So it's there to tell you things which fundamentally affect the, um, the value of the property, structural issues, roof problems, damp problems, these sorts of issues. The building survey is a much more complex report. It's a Word document, um, typically 150, 200 pages long, and it will go into the property in much more detail. And it's geared at houses which have been significantly altered, extended, changed uh, over many, many years. So you need a detailed report because there are so many elements of that property that need describing. But for most houses, the level two, the old home buyer survey, is the right report to have. Brilliant. And Giles, you might <clears throat> reply, how long is a piece of string? But how long do you spend on a level two or a level three, just as a sort of typical? Well, actually, it is a piece of string. It's as simple as that. You, you yeah. genuinely don't know. I think until you pull up in that house, you really, really don't know. And I always say, well, I've always said to people I've worked with in the past, and I always say to myself, every time I go there, you need to spend as much time at that house as you need to spend. And this is where I think the difference between private and corporate surveyors come in is that private surveyors have got the time to do one survey a day where they can spend as much time as they need to in the house to make sure that when they drive away, they've got all the information they need. If you're thinking about having a survey done and that surveyor is doing two or three surveys a day, think twice because he's going to be under pressure to make sure that he moves on to the next one and he may not have that extra bit of time to go that little bit of extra mileage to find out what's wrong with your house. Great tip, great tip. And I, I, one of the, when I'm trying to, um, and a consumer duty uh, means that more than ever, we've got to make sure that the customer understands what a survey is and has been offered a survey by us. We don't want to be responsible for a customer coming back saying, well, you didn't tell me about a survey. Um, we don't want to be doing that. Thank you. And um, so, it's, you know, we, we, this is more important to us now than ever. And therefore, it's good for customer. And um, I, I often say to the customer, well, you might spend five or six hundred pounds or whatever the fee, fee is, but you might end up saving lots of thousands of pounds. Is that fair enough? Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I've been in this game for many, many years, as you can probably, well, you know, Mark, you know very well. And I think I have yet to do a survey where I haven't walked away thinking that money was worth, that, sorry, that survey was worthwhile. Um, you know, we always find things, we find things which are deal breakers. And I think that's really important to say is that we're not here to kill the survey, uh, to kill the house purchase. We're here, here to give you a survey which enables you to buy the house with your eyes open. And I think that's really, really important because what we're trying to say to people is, look, this is what's wrong with the house. These are the things you need to be aware of today. And these are the things you need to be aware of further down the line. Um, and actually, a, a survey is really, really good for that because as an investment tool, it's really good. It's not a guarantee. It's not an insurance policy. But what it is, is it will give you a working document so that you can get that house right now and as i always say to people you never know what's going to happen tomorrow you need to buy the house in the knowledge that you may have to sell that house on again in a few months time or a year or so's time it's far better that you know now what's wrong with it rather than have someone knock on your door in a few months time or a year's time and tell you then that the roof is leaking great advice great advice okay so i'm just doing a mortgage um for a young first-time buyer um on a flat and he said well it's a flat i don't need a survey on a flat because it's leasehold and that's not my problem is it is it his problem, Giles? Yeah, I think I think surveys on flats are uh, uh, an, an area which are always sort of pushed to the side. In the old days, the RICS used to have a specific flat buyer's report. Um, so you bought a house or a flat, and depending which one you bought, you bought that particular report. Surveys on flats are absolutely vital. Um, if you are buying a flat, you are buying into a bigger building. So, for example, you know, if you've got six flats in a classic Victorian mid-terraced house, your flat on the first floor may be absolutely great. It's not going to have any rising damp. It's not going to have any leaking from the roof because it's mid-floor. It's fantastic. The problem you've got is that you have got an inherent sixth liability to contribute towards the roof, the dampness coming into the basement flat, the pointing of the walls, the parapets, the gutters, the downpipes, the windows, whatever else it might be. 
So absolutely, a flat is really, sorry, a servant flat is absolutely important. And one really, really good tip somebody buying a flat can do at the very, very outset is ask the solicitor to make sure that that flat is effectively managed. In other words, the building that the flat is in has got an effective management organisation with a reasonably good sinking fund and an annual service charge. If those things are all in place, then you can at least buy the property with a little bit of reassurance, knowing that somebody is looking at that building and is spending the money to maintain it. If you're buying a flat that has got no management company, you are very, very exposed. But yes, surveys on flats, absolutely key, more important than ever. Brilliant. That's a really good answer. And I one thing I picked up there, can you can you always find out what money is in the pot, as it were? Yeah, well, it's, it's always the question you can ask. Um, my, my worry is self-managed blocks uh, where the residents uh, manage the building, because unless you've got a property expert in that group of people, he may not understand building well enough. Uh, the analogy I always give is that you can anybody can put nice magnolia wall and paint and wallpaper around the common parts in the hallways and make it look very, very smart. But is anybody up on the roof looking at the valley gutters and the chimneys and the flashings and everything else? So you need somebody that manages the building well um, and understands building to make sure that that money is effectively spent. Um, but yes, you can always ask the question, how much is in the pot? But more importantly, how much do you have to pay a year to in go into that pot? And if you're paying £100 a year, it's not enough. If you're paying £1,000 a year, it's probably about right. Okay, that's interesting because the other thing I think we're finding more and more with the uh, leasehold properties is the ground rent. Um, uh, ground rent is becoming a problem with with lenders as well. Yeah, ground rents are, and particularly escalating ground rents is the one mm. you've got to work with new mm. build properties. Um, ground rents uh, are on period properties are generally not a problem, but if you're buying a new build house, I might say, as well as a flat. Yeah. You need to be very, very sure about the ground rent and are, are there any hidden charges? Is the ground escalating? Is there an estate charge? I mean, we're going off to a slight tangent, but, you know, if you're buying on a modern housing estate, is there an estate charge uh, which covers the communal areas, the playgrounds, the roads and everything else, all the cutting the grass? Often local authorities insist on an estate charge. And again, that figure, too, can rise really, really steeply as the years go on. Yeah, I'm finding with the equity release inquiries I'm getting and they're becoming more and more and it's all about the property and it's all about those kind of charges and the equity yeah. lease lenders because they're going to be the ones that sell the property most likely they don't like it at all so uh, least, now listen least. i don't want to upset you on a friday afternoon because you're a good man but um i want to just touch on on your your bet noir the new build um so no, um, Giles is always a bit cautious about new build, um, and he's going to tell us why. I think now, um, what's going on in new build world, Giles? Uh, new builds are uh, a worry to me. Um, I, I think again, you know, in the old days when when uh, housing developments were built, the uh, the the builders and the site foremen were all local people. So in the Victorian days, you know, the builders were local. The the site foreman lived down the road. He they all drunk in the same pub. They all knew each other. And they built a good product problem we have these days is that with a lot of the modern estates that we can't get the workforce and so we're shipping in uh, workforce from all over the country uh, to build houses uh, the site foremen uh, are going from one site to another they may not have local knowledge they may not even have constructional knowledge or at least enough constructional knowledge and what we're seeing as surveyors is that the the actual finished quality of these houses is really really poor um and but they look so shiny giles sorry they look so shiny. They look lovely and shiny. And, you know, you can make anything look nice. It's back to my flats. You can make anything look nice. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, doing a survey on a new build is always great fun. Uh, and I love it. And, 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 and I can normally tell within 30 seconds of going up into the roof of a house in particular, whether that construction has been well built or not. And the other thing to bear in mind is a lot of houses are not being traditionally built these days. You know, the days of brick and block houses are, are, are really diminishing. We're now onto timber framed houses, SIP houses, which are, you know, insulated panel houses come on the back of a lorry. One day there's a field, next day there's a house. Um, and these have to go up to actually the, the millimeter, millimeter tolerances. Um, and if they're out in any way, um, that house is, uh, is compromised. So absolutely, new bills are a really, really hot potato of mine. And I would suggest anybody buying a new build do not discount a survey. At least look into it. 
Um, because I think moving down the line four or five years when these houses come to be resold on, that's when the problems are showing through. Brilliant. And just a couple of uh, couple of things that you've seen, a couple of stories that you can tell. Um, so just uh, is anything come to mind? Yeah, I think, you know, as I said earlier on, I, I think we, we we never see a house or I never see a house that hasn't got something which needs to be passed on. And I think that's the moral, really. I mean, you and I could chat all day about, you know, the, the, the house where the guy's chopped his chimney out or whatever he's done. I mean, we're, we've just, just been involved this week in one where um, it's a flat and the the, tent, the client on the top floor, the, the front owner on the top floor has decided to put a hot tub on his roof. So what he's done is he's literally cut out some of his the roof on this block of flats. Uh, he's created a deck. He's put a lovely hot tub. Uh, he's fenced all in. He's got a lovely view of the town and his hot tub. The only problem is he's now compromised the roof. He's got all the way to the water. And uh, more importantly, he's compromised the lease. So, you know, you never know what's going to come around the corner. Uh, what a great, well, well, sad story, but great story. And I remember, Giles, you told me about where well, you had to go in, into an estate and they got the size of the staircase wrong, hadn't they? All, over, yeah, all across. Yeah, so that's dangerous. One. I mean, that's dangerous. Someone could kill themselves, literally. Yeah, absolutely. If you come down the stairs uh, or up a stairs, but if you come down the stairs, your brain automatically triggers the same width of the stairs or the same rise of the stairs. So consequently, if those stairs are out by a couple of millimetres, if the bottom tread is slightly at a different height, uh, then you will fall over. So, yeah, absolutely. And this was a, a block of, uh, sorry, a housing development where um, we suspect that most of the staircase on that development were wrong. Um, and the repair was astronomical because potentially the only thing you could do is to replace the staircases. It was literally over a few millimetre, but that was enough to kill you um, if you weren't really, really careful. So, yeah, new build again, really, really careful with new build housing. It's interesting, isn't it? And I, and it my next question was going to be to ask you about things that valuers have not spotted, but I mean, we can we can just do the, the hot tub, can't we? Because a drive by or a desktop or even a valuer might not spot that. Yeah, so. absolutely. I, I have, you know, to, the worry to me is that 75 percent of people buying a house or a flat won't have a survey. Um, and and it worries me immensely because, you know, for the investment that we we take off people, uh, we will find things wrong with that house. We shall say not to stop you buying it, but at least make you buy it in the full knowledge that when you come to sell it, those things won't be a problem to you. So yeah, absolutely, have a okay. survey, uh, or at least at least ask about having a survey. Okay, so um, let's sort of start to wind up now, and let's talk about how you work with a customer. So if I refer Mr. and Mrs. Bloggins to you, um, what happens, mate? Easy. Um, I always say to people, talk to me about what you're buying. Let me find out where it is. Let me look at it online. We can discuss the type of survey. I can give you a quotation. We can send you an example survey. I will leave you in peace. I won't be ringing you every 30 seconds saying, hey, what about using us? It's entirely up to you. I will give you the facts. I will talk to you about it. And then we will give you the uh, the information. If you decide to go ahead, we do all the work. We book it all in. We do the survey. And then more importantly, we talk to you. We talk to you on the day of the survey to discuss what we found. We give you the written report a few days after that. And then we talk to you again after that when you've read it so that when you walk through the door with your keys, you know exactly what you're walking into, what you need to look for, where your repairs need to be and what your expenditure is. And we're always on the end of a phone. That's the important thing. And is it fair to say, Giles, that the, when the survey report drops on the doormat from the nice postman, providing the dog hasn't got it first, is actually quite a foreboding document. It's full of it's full of caveats and paragraphs and subsections so it's quite a scary document any tips on how to read a survey yeah, absolutely i mean the first thing to say is luckily for us we we rarely, rarely post we normally um but yeah the um the the report the report is a oh that was a bad time wasn't it the report is a um a, a difficult document to read and i think you know what's really important is that um you discuss it. And that's why I say we always make a play on making sure that people discuss the survey with us. The day we've done it, uh, we talk it through, read the report and then discuss with us again afterwards. It's really, really important that you discuss the survey with your surveyor. And, and we will do that as many times as people want so that they fully understand what they're buying. And yes, don't just buy a survey, read it and then ignore it. Discuss it. That's the key. Brilliant. Brilliant. And Giles, a little commercial for your good self. Who are you? Where do you work? And what? how do people get in touch with you? 
I work for a company called Certus Property Consultants. We're based in uh, Cambrai Place in the middle of Cheltenham. Um, we cover pretty well anywhere within uh, your neck of the woods, Mark. Uh, so we go anywhere within sort of Gloucestershire, Oxfordshire, Worcestershire, Wiltshire, you name it, surrounding counties. Got um, it. If in doubt, give us a ring. Certus Property Consultants, be delighted to have a chat with you. All right, Giles, thank you very much indeed. And any final things you want to say? Any caveats or... Uh... No, nothing to say. Uh, the only thing I would say is if you are involved in buying a property, a house, a flat, uh, anything like that, please at least think of a survey. Don't be one of the 75% that discount it outright. And please, whatever you do, don't rely on the mortgage valuation. It is a valuation, not a survey. Brilliant. Thank you, Giles. Thanks for your time, as always. Um, you know, we, Giles and I have a lot of fun together. That was quite a serious chat, but I think it needed to be serious because um, it's it's a big point to make. And uh, I think, as Giles has alluded to, if you're putting in 29 grand of your own cash or 63 grand of your own cash, you don't want to see that go down in smoke because someone's built a hot tub on top of the roof. 